everybody. Uh, my name is Ayman Aitani. I'm a business growth specialist. Uh, I work with founders to help them grow their business by acquiring customers. Um, and as they grow, helping them to introduce business process as they scale and help them with customer retention. Um, customers I've worked with in the past uh, include companies like Kareem, uh, long before they were acquired by Uber, and uh, Matic is another marketplace as well. Um, I, I'm also a founder myself. I founded a company that does work with uh, government entities. It helps them run and manage uh, uh, startup programs as well. Now, what we're going to talk about today is um, uh, it's an open discussion about growth and acquiring customers. And um, you'll see my approach when it comes to uh, what is it that you need to look into and why if you're B2B or B2C. And I'll do this with uh, each of you um, separately uh, or over the, uh, during this call. Um, so a couple of things I, I'd like to focus on in our session together. One of the key aspects, uh, one of the key aspects that I focus on is one of the common mistakes that I see founders uh, do is they feel that acquiring customers is not their problem. They need to find somebody to take care of it. So it's not a personal problem. It's a company problem. It's not a personal problem. They need to find somebody to take care of it. That somebody usually takes form in uh, somebody in the company that, that's employed, head of marketing, CMO, whatever fancy name you want to give them. It sometimes takes form in an outsourced uh, freelancer. That's also a common form I see. The third is uh, it's given out to a company like an agency or a sales company if it's in B2B, uh, a call center somewhere or so on. So. Those are usually the forms of it. I understand the beginning, if you're looking to build your tech, you're trying to figure out stuff and some staffing and so on, you might not want to do that. But if there's one thing that you wanna take away from our session today, is that this is something that you should learn yourself. The reason being is with no customers, there's no business, there's, there's nothing. Um, I've had many, many founders get behind their veil where they're outspoken when you talk to them, but when I ask them to go out and do some business and sales and so on, they feel uncomfortable doing that. And that's by nature. The concern I have with this is if you don't learn how to do the ugly part yourself that we don't like to do, you cannot manage somebody else. They will give you excuses. They will hide behind things, especially when you're dealing with freelancers and agencies and so on. Um, some people I've seen, they've, 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 they've went the mile of going, getting uh, somebody and giving them equity around anywhere from 6 to 10% of the company for them to lead on the sales or business development or the customer acquisition to only find out a few months later that they're not the right person for that job. And you have this equity that's stuck with them now and you know, you know six, anywhere from 3 to 10% is, 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 a, is, a, is a large amount of equity. So uh, you can avoid all of this if you spend some time on your own figuring it out. And that's B2C and B2B. When it comes to B2C, it is acquisition on digital. It's Instagram, it's Facebook, it's, it's Google. So those are paid ads and there are tools for that. And for that, you need around 50 hours of YouTube content. Sessions like this help and other things that you're doing help and so on. But at the end, it's, it's, it's 50 hours of YouTube in the range of 50 hours of YouTube content and money to burn that doesn't hurt you. So you set aside a few hundred dollars to run a few ads that will go nowhere. But that means you're gonna go inside, you're gonna get your ad rejected by Facebook because you did something wrong. You're gonna get these weird comments from people that are not in, in your target audience for you to look at. Again, I'm talking about the DTC part. That part uh, uh, is uh, will really benefit you later on when you're looking to hire somebody and you ask them for things. Um, if you're if you're shy about doing it in your own brand, you want to be perfect when you go out. If you want to do that, go that route. I've seen some insecurity in, in that direction. Let's say that's the case. Do what a lot of people, other people do is uh, uh, the same way you have a, a, your own a, a, another social uh, uh, account. You can create a temporary account, a temporary account for something that you fool around with and play around with without your name. I don't recommend this because just you know go go straight in. There's no shame in learning this, but in case. You feel very, you know, uncomfortable about doing this in the name of your own company. It's fine uh, uh, to do this under, under us. So this is for you to learn. From the B two B part, 
that's also a little bit uglier because you have to call people and talk to them. And B2B is relationships and to some extent, reaching out to companies that you know, that you know who are in, in, your, in your sector. So you have, so the way you do it in B2B is you make a list of, I'm targeting this type of customers. So let, let me go with the B2B guys that we have, Absolute Collateral, Face Key, Recommend, and Session Forward, all right? So Session Forward, you tell me system integrators, there are probably 200 in one, in, in one of the cities you're targeting, Dubai, Bahrain, Jeddah, let's say, let's say 200 of those. You'd look at those who have 56, you have a decent website, they have that integration and so on. From those, you'd look on your LinkedIn network, who do you know, who you can reach out to and so on. In many cases, others, you'd add them on LinkedIn, you'd call over the phone to say, I want to talk to whoever you think in their company would do. It's uncomfortable to talking to people that we don't know. It's uncomfortable doing that. But the thing is, any person you hire, any salesperson you hire, they will not know how to communicate and what to communicate. Um, I personally hid, hid uh, for example, I personally hate finance and accounting. I have an MBA and I don't like it. I've ignored my company's finances for the longest time. It's somebody else's problem. As long as we're declaring VAT and the auditor says it's okay, I don't, it's not for me. It's, 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 it's not for me. I'm focusing on product, on marketing, on services, and so on. And then I want to get better. So what it was, I hired a company. I know the guy is very, very good. He ran the books for around nine months. And I didn't touch it because they gave me reports. I talked to them and it's, it's just something, you know, he's a good guy, he knows what he's doing. And then at one point I said, I wanted to look at some financial data because I wanted to create new services and products. I need the financial data. When I asked for the books and I look at them, they're financially accountingly correct, but they had nothing to do with me as a business owner to make my decisions on. So I had to, after, after nine months of me not paying them to do things that works for them, but not for me, I had to sit down and learn basics that are annoying and ugly to learn. But for now, I've changed different accountants. I've dealt with different financial controls in our company. I feel very comfortable hiring and firing because I understand now what to look for and the signs. Before now, I used to keep it. They know their stuff. It's just, you know, it's just too much for me to, to understand and handle. This is what I'm hoping from an attitude perspective that you learn the ugly stuff on your own personally so that later on you can hire and fire and manage somebody who can do this. And that's done with X hours of YouTube, a bunch load of mistakes as you run the campaigns and, uh, and the calls and so on. So that's one key aspect uh, uh, for that. Would um, you have a question, Ayman, I, I you, uh, can, uh, um, can we draft a little bit? Because I don't come from, from B2B background. Uh, I'm okay with trying to, to be a little bit uh, Mm -hmm. Mahesh, none of us on this call come from where we need to be to create a company. None of us. None of us here come from the right. We don't. We might tick one of the boxes, but we miss the bunch of the others. So, cool. Okay. You don't, you don't have to say I don't. You know, I don't come from this. None of us come from anything we should. It will be extremely helpful for us to to go into the details of a of a um, of a possible pipeline for approaching uh, uh, like businesses, like from step from. Step by step. So basically, add this person, like add three people from the company on LinkedIn, uh, call the mail them, uh, find, find their, email, their, their email, call the mail them, then try. All right. To All right. The do, you have, do you know what profile would buy from you from a B2B perspective or not yet? What's that? Sorry? Do you know what profile in the B2B, com in the company that you're targeting? Would buy from you? Is it the tech manager? Is it the marketing manager? Yes, we have we have some uh, we have some ideas, but we we, are, we don't know yet who is the buying persona because Great. we have one client. That's also fine. And this is all a B two B discussion. Um, so uh, uh, Mahesh, there's no secret code, and I have a bunch of books that I can recommend to you. That I that I, uh, for those of you later, if you can add me on Instagram, I share a lot of uh, 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 business content there. If you DM me there, I'll, I'll send you a bunch of books when it comes to B two B or B two C. Um, there's no secret sauce. Um, what I've what I've sensed from reading and my personal experience and helping others in the B two B space is it involves a lot of trying. Until we're seven years in and we can afford to get this great sales guy who's going to come in and build the sales team and he's going to do everything for us magically, all right? Long before we get there, we're going to have to figure it out. And it's done with brute force. Brute force meaning. 
system integrators, you have 200 in the country. Bring them down to 60 based on their reps and what they're doing. Those 60, we're making a list of those. It could be on the whiteboard, it could be on a CRM like pipe drive or something like this. So very simple, it could be an Excel, nothing fancy. Don't go, don't go with this huge CRM that takes you six months to implement, right? It's just from those 60, what we're doing is we're trying to find them on LinkedIn because you've gone them down to ones who have a decent web presence. That means you can somehow communicate with them. You can find their phone number and so on. And you're adding a bunch of those on LinkedIn. Most of them, a lot of them will say yes. All right. Uh, what I recommend you to do is don't do the mistake of many others. As soon as they say yes, you can say, hi, my name is Mahesh. I want to sell you something. Let it sleep for a week. They'll forget who you are and why you guys connected. They'll forget in a week, 10 days, two weeks. So, so decide on, on what is a good period for you. In two weeks, you come in saying, um, hello, Amy. Um, I see, uh, you know, congratulations. So, so what you would write, and this is what you need to learn as a founder so that you can, whoever sales guy comes, you need to tell them. You say, and it's customized. So it says, great, uh, 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 great job with Amy's with uh, My Gold Souk. Great, great job with My Gold Souk on your partnerships with their integrators. So it's Cisco, Microsoft, and so on. I know this is a great market for you now with COVID and so on. I'm reaching out because we're going in, we're being very clear. I'm reaching out because system integrators have done, have increased the revenue. That's what you're promising me, increased revenue, right? So you're coming in for me, as the, for Amy as a system integrator, have increased the revenue by adding this product line. So why are you telling them revenue? Two, you would tell them that we have all of the support needed so, so we have we 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 provide the sales support as in we empower your sales team. We have the tech teams. We have the after sales as in don't worry if you're selling our stuff, we're gonna help you sell it. Uh, if you sell it, we're gonna implement it, and and if you implement it, uh, we're gonna help you support it. So don't worry about adding to your portfolio something that will cause you harm with your existing customers and so on. Um, so. And we, we'd like to we'd like to we'd like to arrange for for you know we'd like to arrange for a meeting to to, to, to talk about no quick five minutes there's no you know it's, it's a meeting it has to be around half an hour from every ten you reach out to three are going to respond All right and for those who don't respond you can reach out to them two weeks later I know Amy that things are very busy for you. System integrators, so it's the same, but with a, with a, with a twist with a twist on that. And you try a couple of times and, and, until you get it, and so on. And on your Excel or whiteboard, you say, okay, um, added on LinkedIn. Then they accepted you on LinkedIn. Then I sent them a message, no response. Follow up one, not sent. Follow up two, not sent. So that's the, uh, that that type of thing. And then the meeting. That's brute force. You're not selling as in, it's not a hard sell. You know, you're coming in to say, I'm going to provide you with revenue and I know who you are. It's not a random thing. I've chosen you and so on. And, you know, and, and you go through the motion and I'd be very happy with a no. And I like, I, I really like it when somebody tells me, no, we're not interested or it's not for us because I just take them off my list because if they don't, I have follow-ups and I have a lot of things to do with them. So I'm very happy when they tell me no. So I look for the no's. Like, please let me know because it's easier. To, it's, I just moved down the list. So be comfortable with the no's uh, because you know, you're know you here to sell and you're not for everybody. And again, uh, it's it's like any uh, personal relationship. Not every person that you met liked you. Not every person you had a crush on knew you existed or spoke with you. And we fumbled when we spoke with them first. And you know the average age group here is a lit, little bit over, I'm going to say over 25. We were all 14 to 23 for a time, and we've all fumbled how we spoke with our relationships. We've been better. We, we've become better at it with time, but you know, uh, it took us mistakes of wearing the wrong clothes or saying the wrong thing or choosing the wrong time. You have to figure those out. Now you know that you don't, you don't talk to him or her at that point or when you're wearing this or with this cheesy line. And that's how you learn it to then when the sales guys come, you say, look, this is my playbook, more or less. You have some experience, modify it, but that's the core. They, we talk to our marketing guy. You know this with time. Marketing guy, they care about revenue, support, and so on. So, so this is your toolkit, and, and, and you start to follow up with them. How many do you reach out to? How many meetings? How many follow-ups? So that becomes, because you did it yourself, the ugly part yourself, you're able to do it with them. And that's, that's the overall framework for B2B. Got it. So and, uh, as a sole founder of, of a B2B startup, you think that this should be... Uh, main, my main job 
you think? Is your is your product ready? Mm, yeah, in parallel, I'm, I'm I'm improving it, and we are, we are with my team. But but yeah, we, we, it's, can you do an hour? Uh, can, you do, can, can you do an hour a day in the morning before you get started with anything else? Uh, One yes, hour a day. I mean, right now, my main challenge right now is is uh, is uh, bridging uh, uh, engineering mode, mode with uh, sales. You mode. have 10, 10 hours of your day to do that, and throw like away of 10 hours of engineering. I'm asking for 45 minutes, not even an hour. Sorry. In the morning, get it out of the way. It's just a bunch of, it's, and again, it's, it's not like walking up to a girl to, to a girl or guy in school and speaking with them. You're just adding them on LinkedIn. It's just, you're sending them a message, we're hiding behind things. So it's, uh, I know some days where you don't feel like it or you're too busy, you skip that day, but more or less, you know, we're working right. out two or three times a week, that sort of thing. Great, thank you. Um, so for the B2B guys, I've approached that framework here. What are questions you have about this absolute collateral face to session forward and recommend this? What, what, are, what, are, what are questions that you have there on this, on this, on this framework? All right. Uh, yes. I, um, when it comes, I just have a question. When it comes yes. to, for example, uh, LinkedIn uh, Navigator, Yes, to buy. Yeah, now how, uh, I'm kind of, I'm not sure, how uh, useful is that? Uh, we know that it, you can filter to, and find out the right people, but uh, how much of a response normally people get when using those tools? Uh, at the end, you're going for the connection. Yes. Right, so you're going for the connection. Either you're gonna add them on your network or you're gonna message them without adding them. So either way, you're trying to get that message there yes. and then you're hoping they respond. Yeah. Okay? And your message is gonna be three, four lines that they're gonna read on their phone. They won't be reading it on their desktop from, you know, they're gonna be reading it from their, from their phone. So send it to yourself or send it to a friend and then check it to see how big it is. Because if it's gonna be long, because, because I, I guess, so you're a tech company that does custom software development for enterprise, I get a bunch of those all the time. This, I, they add on LinkedIn and they say, hi, Ayman. And I, and I have this long list of which it should be, you know, uh, it shouldn't be even, even be an email of, of bullets of they do this type of software and so on, a long list of things. Those for me are clearly not, they don't know who I am and what we sell and what I do and so on. So that's the difficult part. The sales navigator gives you access to more people. You have more messages to send and so on, but your method is the same. You can do this with your pro account and you can buy your emails, you can do things. So it's not, it's not a matter of, of, of the tool itself. I don't feel it's the tool itself. And then again, it's a monthly tool. It's not very expensive. You can, you can run it for a couple of months and then, and then stop. The sales and navigator that you mentioned. Is, is, is there is a, a, a recommended formula, for example, when, when communicating with the first time, let's say in introduction, how much to talk about the technology or how much sh shall I introduce uh, if myself? If you know the, the, the discussion I spoke about uh, uh, earlier, the mm -hmm. first one or two lines is about them. Mm -hmm. So you're talking to, you're talking to, uh, 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 let's see, you're talking to, to, to Nabil from FaceKey and you're saying, Nabil, uh, uh, you know, congratulations, congratulations about this and that and so on. And something about them, you can get this off their website, off the LinkedIn profile, of, of, the, of a Google search. So you, because you deal with enterprises, there's something there. So even if it's a few months old, it doesn't have to be this week. So that, that means, you know, this is for you. So it's a few message saying, I, 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 you've differentiated yourself already from most salespeople, uh, amateur salespeople who just did some homework, which is 10 minutes to look out, out something and message them. So that's the first, first line. The second line is about what it's in it for them because you're coming to sell. Yes. But there's something in it for them. So what is it? Added revenue, additional security, solving whatever, a, a, a new vertical for them to sell with, differentiated from competitor, whatever is the key selling point that you feel is the thing. So I know you have 20, 30 things. Choose two, two, two things from, from that. And then ask for the meeting. And that, you'd have three variations of it because the first time it won't work, the second time, the third time, until, you know, at some point you have to give up and say, you know what, I've reached out to you three times, four times. In the books, they tell you seven to 10 times. You start to get a response after seven to 10, 10 times. I mean, it depends on your level of comfort. 
I personally like three times, and then you know I move on to somebody next on the list. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And how about the reputation? I mean, I, I worry maybe that uh, you, uh, I mean, who's who's reputation? No, maybe I mean uh, I'm I'm not pushy as a as a as a person. Maybe sometimes I feel like uh, uh, people don't want to be bothered by me. No, we, we should you, be, we should be bothering people. Do you feel, Mahesh, that your product, that session four, can really help your business? Yes. Didn't you leave a full time job to build this because you feel this can really make a difference for their business? Yes then you're not bothering them. You're not an agent sales guy who you have a quota to meet and somebody gave you this product for session four like, okay, if I don't do this, I won't get an extra 2% on my revenue and I have to try to push this. You've committed your time, your effort, risk, riskiness of your, you know, we're all in an age group where we have relationships and partners and responsibilities to our parents and so on. So you've risked a lot of this because you feel this is something that will help them. And that is what you need to bring forward, uh, Mahesh, because they're getting contacted by all, all sorts of people who are selling them junk. You have something that you know that can help them and bring that through in, in what you communicate with them and always keep it, keep it brief to, to, to what you want. All right. Cool. Um, Omar, just a note for the reviews platform that you have. Um, you're on the B2B side, okay? You're on the B2B. So it's a B2B offering uh, in, in your perspective and you need to have a clear offering. And this clear offering, before you build anything further, I talk to re I would reach out to retailers on top of them saying, look, I'm happy to give you five free videos, three free videos. From today, you commit, I'm launching in three months. I'm gonna give you three videos, but I wanna know from you, what is it you need? Because what a lot of them don't have is the reviews that you get, but a lot of them what they want is they want Amazon reviews and Facebook reviews and things like this. But there's but that's a difficult thing for you to look at in terms of what you're authorized to do on those platforms. So you, you can't be a platform that is that takes a lot of these reviews and so on. So there's a, you have to confirm by their policies for your sake and the sake of the customer you're servicing so that they're not affected by that and they lose their account or they get whatever penalized for this. Okay. So 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 Talk to them, because because when I sense from you, when I was asked, that's why I, 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 I'm adding to, to that, Omar, uh, in your case, I didn't sense mm -hmm. from you a clarity a little bit in the direction of where you want us to go. So ask them, ask them for, I'm gonna give you three videos. Just ask, just tell me, how would you use them? What do you need on top of this? What do you care about? And things like this. Okay, thanks. All right, do we have anything on the B2B before I move on to the B2C? Absolute face key session forward recommend. We're good. Yes. All right. Now from a yes, you want to say something, Steve? Uh, all good. Okay. So Steve, in your particular case, it's all relationships. And yeah. In your case, I would I would I would pay attention to your LinkedIn profile, your first LinkedIn profile, and then a copy of LinkedIn profile. And Thank look you. at the things that uh, you know. Uh, and you'd update your past jobs, the screen of past jobs, a little bit relevant to what you were doing, what, what you're doing now, and do the basics of having the large cover photo and, 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 and things like this. Have a have an open profile so people can message you without without paying. Um, yeah, there's a public profile where you show up in Google searches, so you can control uh, very specific things in your Google prof profile. And your little profile. So uh, and and I would work in your case on the the uh, not only the what you reach out to others with, but the introduction text. You'd say, dear Mahesh, can you please introduce me to Nabil? Uh, we can service him in this. So, so, so that introduction request, I'd work on something there. And there are a lot of resources online for you to find like an introduction request uh, for that. Yeah, I find that's the most important thing. Like I've done sales for like 10 years with global banks. And so it's that tagline the most important bit is getting that first line right. So I don't pitch like a big essay for my, for my, to get a client because it's almost like it's being lazy. All I want from them is a meeting because they're not going to buy my product through one email. So all I want is one line to really hook them to get the meeting. So for my case, everyone either wants cash or they want collateral. And I know which clients want cash 
and I know which clients want collateral. So I'll email them going, hey, I understand you want cash for these reasons. It'd be great to speak to you. And they're like, yeah, I do. And so it's just working out that one tagline. And then they ask for more information. Then it's a paragraph. And they ask for more information. Then it's longer. So it's like a pyramid. So I make sure I get my um, pyramid right. That's, That's where experience uh, helps in, in identifying them. All right. Um, Moving to the B2C part, I know a lot of you are at the MVP stage. Uh, what I would look at in, um, in all of them is there are, there are, there are key initial uh, setup that you need to do with the, when you B2C. So there's something called SDKs. So Facebook and Instagram have their own, Google have their own, and there are third party tools as well if you're looking to use other platforms. You need to spend time in the beginning so this is a, a fully developer a fully developer part so you as a founder in this case you don't have to go into that you just find the uh, just google facebook sdk for your app and, and google as well uh, google's firebase that goes to the developer they have to add that uh, to your uh, to your app or website the reason being is once they do that you're able to build a funnel the funnel means i've spent six hundred dollars this week and i've gotten purchases worth of $80. For you to be able to measure that, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to help the ad networks by putting in their code in your technology so that they're able to, they're able to trace, they're able to trace how much you spent, what did you get in return, um, how many signups, how many downloads and visits that you got and so on. So that type, that type of thing. Um, the reason being is you need to be able to build some form of um, some form of funnel. I'm gonna share with you some. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. This is a uh, this report. It's a report example of uh, the type of tracking that you need to do. So this applies for an app or website and so on. This is for anything that's B2C related that we we could be able to track. So um, the concept is. How much, so the key aspects of this is how much did you spend and what's your ROAS, which is your return on ad spend. So how much you spent and what's your return on this. Now, these numbers are great, but don't expect to find them at your stage. I've seen this with customers who are a few years in and they've been able to uh, find their product market fit. So they know their customer. They know exactly what to give them and so on. And it's very difficult for early stage companies to get this, to get this type of return on ad spend. Um, and what I really like about, about market fit is some of these, some of these companies that, that, that I come in to look at, they have these, I know a lot of you are focusing on, you mentioned user experience and UX and so on. They have these really poor signup pages. They have this really poor experience all the way through, but because the product or service that they're offering is something that the customer really, really wants. The customer is ready to go through certain hoops to get there. And that's when you start to hit high returns on your ad spend. So in the beginning, when you have low ones, that's okay, that's okay. So anywhere from, from 10 to 40% is, 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 is an okay range. It doesn't mean that your business is broken, it just means that you're early in your product market fit. So these are numbers for you to look at. And then for you to look, but again, before you get here, you're gonna to have to understand how the money was spent and what you're looking at doing. So basically he spent this much money, he got this, uh, uh, this much uh, in terms of downloads. This is the average cost per install uh, and so on. So, so here you're looking at what is, how many, how many purchases did you get? So here you spent this amount of money. Uh, these are the downloads, this is the cost per install. And this is the number of purchases, I, first time purchases I, I got. So 600 purchases is, is decent. You're looking at 700 purchases in a month. That's decent, but it depends on your business and how much you're bidding them and how much you spent. But this is the type of funnel that you need, you need to look at, at, at. And then you look at different countries. You can look at different countries and in terms of and breakdown and detailed breakdowns. So what's your cost per install when it comes to the, the Facebook, Instagram network. What about Google? And uh, then you go to details. What, how are we doing on Android? 
folks who are coming from Android, uh, Facebook, iOS, Facebook, Android, Google, iOS, Google. So your cost per install on that. How much did you spend? Uh, what are you, the signups that you got for, uh, from them? The CAC is important, which is the cost of acquiring a customer. So when, you, when you're having discussions with your investors or potential investors, they're gonna ask you about your CAC, what's your, what's your cost of acquiring a customer? And that you have some flexibility to, to decide on that, and which is usually how much it costs you to get the first, the, the, the first transaction. So you have X number of downloads, which led to um, X number of signups, to this number of signups, and your cost per signup is this. So in their particular case, their signups is what they wanted to measure. In other cases, you want to look at specifically the, the transactions. So the cost of the first transactions. So see here, you have the cost of the first transaction. So the, the, the cost of the signup is a dollar and a half, but the cost of the first transaction is $27. So this, this is the type of funnel that you run, you run your business with. Because in the opening part, when I told you that you have to learn this yourself, the thing is later on, if you learn this yourself properly, you can manage somebody and all you have to do is look at this once a week. So you go from running this yourself for a while in the beginning to only looking at this once a week or once every couple of days. And you're able to know if your business is doing well. You're able to know if the person running it is able to uh, do their job properly. So this is why if you get your hands dirty in the beginning and you're able to figure out how to structure this and do this, uh, this is the important part from a, from a, a, a B2C perspective. What questions do we have about that? I, I have actually a question, Ayman, uh, if I may. Uh, th th thank you, thank you for this. Uh, uh, we are looking to build this, and we are building it. Uh, I, I, you have a very clean sheet uh, in Excel, so I was wondering uh, how how do you automate the data transfer from Facebook and others to this sheet? Do you do it manually, or you have tools that you are using to make this, uh, uh, you know, uh, more organized and clean? There are a bunch of tools that you can use. Hmm. Some of them are 20, some of them are not. Uh, what I suggest in the beginning, because you need to figure out stuff, yeah. is, is do the do Excel processing. So get it down from Excel, export it, work with it, do your graphs on it and things like this until you figure out really what you care about. From that, you mm -hmm. automate you automate it based on because you have your dashboard ready. Because if you want to build your dashboard today, you're going to change it so many times and it's much easier to change on Excel. It's much less costly and it's faster to do. You can do it in a day versus yeah. to go in the sprint for the guys to change or the tool to use or whatever it is. So yeah. uh, I would I would suggest you do it over over over, uh, over Excel in the beginning. Uh, and, and you download, sorry, uh, you download this data uh, as a raw data from fast, uh, Facebook and, and, and then you transfer it. This is how you do it. Man it's a manual yes, step, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. But, uh -huh. the power, but the ad networks are very powerful. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm telling you, if you spend a little bit more time yourself learning this, you'd have mm -hmm. certain fields in it. You'd say, okay, I want this and that and so on. So there are certain fields and things like this around this that you'd be able to customize the CSV or the Excel that you get from, from Facebook. So, so the default one that they have is good, but you, you want a few things for yourself. So this becomes your custom report that you use every time. And the, okay. dashboard, and the Excel file I showed you, this is when you start to have multiple ad channels, you're spending a lot of money on this and so on. But in the beginning, you're gonna likely start right. with one Facebook, Instagram in the beginning just to get started. And then when you're comfortable, you're gonna add Google and so on. So it's just, you know, it's a gradual, way to, to do this, even if you're on one channel, which is Facebook, Instagram, which is, there are two channels, but it's one ad interface. It's enough, you don't need to go into Excel. You can create a report there. It can show you a lot of this, which is I spent this much, I got this downloads. And so it's one row there that has all of this. What I showed you is when you have multiple ad networks to bring them in together. You don't need to do that in, in, at an MVP stage. Okay, this is helpful. Just another follow-up question, if I may. Of uh, course, uh, we, we do have uh, Facebook and we are running Instagram, right? And, uh, but then uh, we're also tracking, uh, we are tracking uh, uh, the signups uh, using uh, MailChimp. Uh, so uh, everything goes through on, eventually through MailChimp. On uh, email, uh, that's, that's for signups or, or, or for email communication later or, or what? For, for signups, because we have signups, we push them to, to end up on our website for signups waitlist. On, on our uh, uh, website. So we track their signups, uh, the eventual signups, the aggregated signups, 
uh, through MailChimp, uh, which which is the total number. It, they could come from Instagram, they could come from Facebook, uh, and they could co come they from other a, channels. They have an app or a website, Abdul Salam? Website. We, we have a website for to collect the waitlist uh, names. So, yeah. So your question is about how to track the signups. Is this is this what what you want to do? Is this... Yeah. Like, uh, do, do you also link the Mailchimp? Because again, eventually, uh, sure, Mailchimp sure, sure. also the final right. number, right? Very valid question. Uh, mm -hmm. Before we go to the Mailchimp aspect of it, um, it's important that you spend time that your developers spend time. So not you. You just point them in the right direction. Say, I want Facebook. It's a website. It's Facebook's tracking pixel. Tell them that you want Facebook. Tra so you want two things from them. First, you want the tracking pixel to be installed on all of the on all of your pages. That's the first thing that you want from them. Okay. The second thing, the thing that you want from them is you want event tracking. Event tracking means what? Means visit, sign up. If there's an actual, you know, in your case, there's an actual uh, investment or or an act, there's an actual, you know, a transaction that happens there and so on. All of this can be tracked, and that's the developer's work, not yours. You you can look at the end at the ad reporting saying I spent uh, six hundred dollars in terms of ads and I got these thirty signups that resulted in one transaction worth uh, X and then you'd look at if this was worth your time or not. So that you can track the signups within that even even before looking at at your Mailchimp signup or your database signup. Okay and uh, so sorry uh, okay so I'll let others ask questions and maybe I'll follow up uh, with you on a separate uh, email. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, so the B2C, uh, uh, Amy, Amy, you're, um, you're selling already today. Uh, what are you doing in terms of, uh, you want to focus on Instagram? Um, do you have an app or is it purely the website as well? Um, it's an app that basically looks good on mobile. It's very mobile. Uh, sorry, sorry. It's a, it's a website that looks good on mobile. All right, so the same thing about the Salam. You need to yeah. ask your developers for two levels. The first level is to add the tracking pixel throughout all of your website. The second part is, is the event. And in, in, your, in your particular case, because you're e-commerce, uh, the Facebook tracking pixel has very specific uh, customizations for that so that we, you know, the, uh, what, what, you, what you can read about it from Amy is you can look at how many people initiated the checkout but didn't actually... Uh, buy, mm -hmm. and, and what and what's 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 uh, uh, and Facebook tells you not only how many people initiated the checkout, but how much uh, the ba how much was the basket size. So you might look at to say, you know what, in February I had a hundred thousand dollars worth of checkout that didn't go through. Why? What is the issue? And so on. Because if your sales is, were, were twenty thousand, but your actual initiated checkout was a hundred thousand, but they didn't convert. There's something there to look into. Is it technology based? Is it UI based? Is it the product based? Is it trust issues? So, so you'll be able to get that type of insight from that. This is why, Amy, you know, uh, I'm emphasizing again that everybody on a personal level spends some time to, to, on these to really see the opportunities for them to grow their business before you. This way, later on, when you hire somebody to do this, you say, okay, show me your initiated checkout. Wait, look, we have this versus. You know, you have no clue, or they're trying, or they're trying to tell you something that, that you don't understand. And in your case, uh, Amy, I would not only look at Instagram; I'd also look at TikTok. TikTok are making a huge grow, uh, making a huge push in this year in the Middle East. They're, they've hired more than hundred people uh, in Dubai alone this year uh, for uh, uh, helping businesses grow on uh, on TikTok. And I'm not talking about dances. I'm talking about driving commerce and ads and things like this. So what I'd recommend, and they have ad products similar to Instagram and Google and Facebook. So the tracking pixels I told you about, the e-commerce aspects and so on, they have a lot of that. And because it's an up and coming platform, it's not as busy, at, which what that means to you and the other founders here is that it's it's less expensive because there, there are not a lot of people using the ads. So you have a little inventory. Two, it's less busy, so that there, there aren't any, there aren't a lot of people who are selling gold accessories, and if they are, they might be doing it very poorly. You can come in with nicer visuals, better targeting, things like this, nicer models and, and things, whatever, whatever you want, uh, depending on how you want to show the products and so on. So uh, you you could differentiate yourself yourself early on, and also the third reason why it's interesting is currently they're matching. So if you put in a thousand dirhams or a thousand dollars, they will they will match that. It's a COVID 
uh, a relief package and so on. So, so it's cheaper and they did match that as well. So I would, I would look at that for both you, Amy, uh, Abdel Salam. It's worth giving it a try if it's not because you can target certain countries uh, yeah. uh, and you can do this in Arabic as well. Uh, it might be it, it might be of interest because I've seen a lot of content because because personally I've been more active on TikTok I've been creating business content there uh, and uh, and the algorithm is smart it's serving me things that are potentially of interest to me there are a lot of because uh, I'm, I'm telling you there are a lot of get rich quick attempts which you know you're not selling get rich quick but there yeah. are a lot of activity around that so from those you might be able to get a certain percentage. Uh, who are a little bit more serious and can value this more than the get rich quick schemes that they that they tend to tend to try to look for. Yeah. You, you have a list, Ayman. You have a list of uh, the bright channels uh, by country. Like, uh, you know, Instagram could be top one for Bahrain, but then in Saudi would be a different channel. Is there uh, something like that for the region? There is. Uh, I mean, there are theories around this, but at this stage, uh, at the time, it depends on how much money you're going to be spending. Yeah. Uh, in terms of media spent on, on that. But at the end, uh, you need to use all of them. So you have to definitely use Google, definitely Facebook, Instagram, uh, and TikTok. So those are the, and, and these are enough for you to be spending a lot of money across these three, even before you go to Twitter or other uh, other acquisition channels and so on. So, um, but the tracking at the Salam, it's very important. The tracking from the beginning, this type of tracking here, the, Cost per installs and signups and bookings and so on because you'll be able to, you'll be able to compare. I'm happy to pay two hundred dollars for a customer if if they're going to transact, especially in your case. Uh, versus, yeah. you know, don't, don't chase the six dollar customer who will never do anything. Okay, good point. Yeah. Learning from that. What questions do we have on the B two C front? Um, Amira, in your case, in my wave, the reason I flagged um, if your social network is going to be expensive, in the cases of Amy and Abdul Salam uh, and, uh, and Urant, uh, so it's different. In their case, there's a clear transaction. So they, they know that with every $10,000, they, they know that they need to spend $10,000 to get uh, 1,000 users from those 1,000 users, they know that 10 of them are, are going to pay at, at $500 each. So they can figure out that math. They could go to the investor and say, look, I've shown you that if, uh, when, I, when I spent $1,000, on average, I get 1,000 people. Those 1,000 people, uh, 10 of them transact at $500 each. That's my math. <laughs> Therefore, Mr. Mr. Investor, if you give me $100,000 to spend, you know my numbers are going to be a little bit different here and there and so on. So in your case, Amira, you're trying, if it's a social network, you're trying to build volume of people who are there, who join. That's the first big step. And the second step is for them to come back and be active and active. Once you're able to achieve those, that's when you're able to sell them ads. I'm assuming it's, it's ad revenue based. Is this, is this your, 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 your revenue driver? Yeah, one of them, yeah. So, so uh, the problem that I see you facing from a social network is technical and advertising. So technical, building a social network is, is huge. Uh, and there's a lot of science behind getting them to use it again and again and so on. If you've watched on Netflix, The Social Dilemma, I don't know if, if any of you guys have seen this or not. They talk about the science behind getting people to interact and spend time on social networks and come again and again and so on. So that's the technical part that you have to overcome. Let's assume you overcome it. Uh, Inshallah, you overcome it, it's taken care of. There's the acquisition part where you're going to ha always have to be in a in a spending mode where they come so you always have to get new customers and then you have to look at how you can retain these customers as you add more so you go, you're going to always going to be in a mode for acquiring customers so you will not easily be able to reach the stage of the others where they have a clear a rough spend that will give them a rough return in your case it's a it's going to be a cycle that you're always going to be chasing and you're going to be uh uh, 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 you're gonna have to raise money accordingly. I'm not trying to 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 to, to dissuade you away from this, but uh, building a social network requires uh, patience, requires funding, extensive funding, and you need to figure out your uh, 
uh, your revenue somehow before if it's strictly only ad based you need the eyeballs and that's so you have to figure out some form of partnerships some form of things like this that will help you generate some form of revenue in the beginning mm -hmm. until you're able uh, until you're able to reach that so that's something i'm flagging for you from a b2c perspective uh, on the list oh thank you all right, and Urent, as we mentioned, a database of uh, a database of uh, 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 owners of, of property and, uh, and phones. You know, it could be a call center if it's a large number, or you and a few members of the, your team, and so on. So that's uh, depends on the volume that you're able to find and do, and so on. So that that I feel is the is the is the fastest and mo most effective way uh, for you to go ahead and get this. Thank you, thank you, man. All right, so to summarize, um, it is very important for us as founders to get our hands dirty on the acquisition process. So if it's B2B, it's getting the calls and trying out the scripts and who, who we are able to reach and the tactics that we think that we have to figure out for ourselves to how to use. If it's on the, on the B2C side, it's about um, building this customer acquisition funnel and how we can share this and what can we do and how we, how, we need to, how much we need to spend to do things here on it. So we have to get our hands dirty within 50 hours. And 50 hours is, is, is not a lot to ask. So 50 hours and some money to experiment uh, 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 on, on some ads, running the ads to see, to see the, 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 the results um, that you have. So that's, uh, 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 the, that's the key takeaway from today. Uh, take a minute, uh, open up Instagram or uh, and find Ayman Aitani, A-Y-M-A-N-I-T-A-N-I. And because you can DM me uh, your questions later on. Uh, DM me the questions that you might have about uh, problems that you might have or so on. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy uh, to, answer, to answer your questions as you're trying over the next period uh, to figure things out. And also, uh, um, you can reach out to the organizers of this event later on. Uh, in case you need any uh, follow-up or details later, uh, 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 it's also something that, that uh, I'll, uh, I'll be happy to, uh, to answer uh, and take care of. Okay. Um, good luck with your growth. It's not easy. What we're trying to do in this room is not easy. You have a lot of friends and family who disagree with you, not to your face, but, but behind your back. And the, they're talking about themselves like, what, what, is, what is Hamza thinking? And why is Amy doing this? And does, doesn't Nabil know any better? And, you know, they won't tell you to your face, but uh, that's the life we chose. And uh, that's the path that, that we're working towards. It, we'll show you, you know, just bit by bit, step by step, we'll be able to, to hopefully reach to where you want to reach. And uh, good luck, guys, with what, you, uh, what you're doing. And if you need anything, reach out to me over Instagram and we'll talk. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. That was very useful. Thank you. Thanks. Bye -bye. We found your article on TikTok. Oh? Yeah. Oh my yeah. We're I've definitely going to implement. Oh, good, 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 good. Uh, and spend some time on TikTok a little bit just for you to figure out the platform. I spent some time myself, and it, uh, it's, it's, it's very engaging and fun at, uh, at this moment. So spend some time there to figure, to figure yourself out. A lot of people here who are ignoring TikTok, they will be on TikTok, you know, eventually within a year or two or six months, whatever it is. So I'm not Yeah. Yeah. So we get in there early. Yeah. Thanks right. so much. Enjoy the Thank rest you. of your Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.